become un un unstable. This whole system is deeply flawed, and that's why I talk a lot about free markets and property rights, Austrian economics, and getting rid of the Fed. All these things are now uh, up for grabs. A lot of people, especially the young people, are looking at this. So for this reason, I'm a bit encouraged by uh, you know what might come out of this. But I think we're going to go through the ringer. I think it's going to get much, much worse, and it's bad enough already. But there's no way that we can step back. The one thing I'm convinced of after having spent so much time in Washington is that this will not be a gradual recovery from this disaster that we have. We're not going to elect enough people and enough courage to vote the right way. And, and uh, there's too much demagoguing and too much misunderstanding that people would revolt. But the collapse will come. It's going to hit the dollar. And then we're going to have our opportunity. So the more people who are protected... Uh, intellectually as well as financially, the better off we'll be in rebuilding what we'll have, uh, what we'll need to do in the near future. Buckle your seatbelt. It's time for another episode of the Prepper Recon Podcast. Whether your plan is to bug out or bug in, CampingSurvival.com has all of your preparedness needs, including fish antibiotics, long-term storage food, water filters, bug out bags, and first aid kits. Use coupon code PREPPERRECON for 5% off your entire order at CampingSurvival.com. When disaster strikes, it's too late to prepare. PrepperRecon.com offers Molly compatible individual first aid kits for your home, auto, or bug out bag. These kits have everything you need to address a traumatic injury, including an Israeli battle dressing, quick cloth, EMT shears, suture kit, stera strips, tourniquet, ACS chest seal, tough strip bandages, gauze, and so much more. $89 includes shipping. To buy your individual first aid kit, go to PrepperRecon.com and click the store tab at the top of the homepage. Order today before it's too late. Today's guest is Pastor Keith Eitan. We had Pastor Keith on not too long ago to talk about prepping, and uh, God redirected the conversation, and we never really got around to covering preparedness. So we, we had Pastor Keith back on today, uh, hopefully to cover some preparedness-related issues. Uh, if we get to it, great. Uh, if God redirects the conversation again, then, then, uh, then you know he's in control. It's not us. So uh, Pastor Keith, welcome back. Hey, I'm glad to be back. Uh, this is a great show. I actually ran into a gentleman at the gun show the other day, and he told me, hey, I heard you on the show. So that's just, I'm happy to be here. Fantastic. Now, we do have a lot. I got a lot of prepper questions for you, but before we start with those, um, I'm reading Dredge Report this morning, and I'm reading this story. This guy, uh, Ted Richards, he's 56 years old, and he has his ears cut off because he self-identifies as a parrot and he wants to look more like a parrot. Now he's already had his face tattooed. He's got like the, the green and yellow and red and all the different color feathers uh, tattooed to his face. Um, he also wants to get a, a beak uh, somehow. I, I don't know exactly how he's going to get the beak, but uh, but that's that's he self identifies as a parrot. Have we just kind of opened the Pandora's box here on lunacy in this country? And and that word lunacy comes from you know uh, they they used to think that you know the full moon made people cra crazy and so loony, so it's from lunar, and that's where we get that word. Uh, but now in Deuteronomy twenty eight twenty eight, it says uh, uh, madness and confusion is is one of the curses that God will send upon a nation that that uh, turns its back on him. Do you think that's what we're seeing? I absolutely do. And Deuteronomy being the fifth book of the Old Testament, the fifth book of the New Testament is the book of Acts. Same thing. The, the Apostle Paul, he was dealing with people who were totally nuts. But in those cases, back in the olden days, they were possessed with demons because they knew what they were. And I'm going to press it. Let me say, some cases there are some people who are just, they have some mental problems, and, you know, the, a little bit of medicine helps them, and they're, they're okay. But in other cases, it, the medicine is not going to work. It will be forever ineffective because you're dealing with a demonic spirit on the person. And that particular gentleman who actually thinks he's a parrot, this dude is possessed by a demon. And a lot of people need to recognize it for what it is and stop poo-pooing and making fun of the Bible 
there's so much truth in the Bible that <laughs> people totally miss it when they see these movies like The Exorcist and The Right, and they think, oh, man, that stuff is make-believe. No, it is not make-believe. And I, one of the chapters in my book, I actually deal with some of this stuff um, in chapter 13 of all numbers, <laughs> demons or depression, because I'm letting preppers know and understand that in some cases you don't want to make preparations and have uh, a preparedness group and have someone who's possessed by a demon in your group. And you just have to be, you have to look at the fruit and be vigilant. I mean, if you have a gentleman in your group when you're prepping and you know that this guy, he loves to beat up on his wife, then you know you're dealing with someone with a spirit of anger. If you um, have a preparedness group and you have someone in your group who, let's say, he likes to mess with little boys, then guess what? This guy has another demonic spirit on him, and it gets very, very deep. And part of this is because the church has lacked on the Mark 16 ministry, um, where Jesus, he tells people that the believers in his name will cast out devils. And Jesus actually did that while he was here. Anybody who read the Bible will notice that, as well as uh, the Apostle Paul in the New Testament. They cast out devils out of people all the time. So if we're dealing, if we're prepping and we're going to have uh, some kind of bug-out location and have a group with us, you've got to really examine the fruit of the people that are in your group because you've got to make sure you don't have someone, if, you know, if someone's in your group and you know he takes a lot of meds, and don't get me wrong, there are some people who take medication and it helps them, but there are some people, they can take all the medication in the world and it's not going to help them because it's a, it's a spiritual issue. And we need to really, really pay attention to this stuff because if you're dealing with someone who is demonically possessed, if he runs out of medicine during a, a grid down situation, it's not going to, it's not the medicine that you're dealing with. You're dealing with a demonic spirit. And you, as a Christian, if you're a believer in the Bible and a believer in Jesus Christ, you have to know that you actually have the authority to cast that demon out of that person, to get rid of it. And it's not, this stuff is not make pretend. Uh, Mark, I've been through a situation recently where I had to cast a demon out of a lady who was at our church. She literally came into our church, and it's funny you bring up uh, this guy with the animal, with the, the parrot. This young lady was at our church visiting. And I noticed every time that the, the other pastor was preaching the good word, she would run to the bathroom and go vomit. And then he'd, she'd come back out of the bathroom. He'd, she, he'd be preaching a good word again. She'd run to the bathroom and go vomit. Eventually, she tapped me on my shoulder and said, Pastor Keith, I need your help. There's a demon attacking me. I said, quickly, come, out, come with me. We ran outside the church because we're not in a big church building. We ran outside the church so I can pray with her personally. The young lady fell on the floor and started slithering around the floor like a snake. And I'm telling you, it was not, I've never seen a human body move in that fashion. She slithered all around the floor like a serpent. And I literally did what the Bible said. I commanded the, the demon, how did, how did you get into her? And the voice that came out of this young lady's mouth, a pretty young lady now, the voice came out of her mouth like a grown man demon. It said, I got into her mother. And I was like, whoa. And the Lord led me to go get another pastor, got another pastor, and then we commenced to pray over her, and eventually we cast the demon out of her, and she's been fine. But in a grid-down situation, if you don't know how serious this spiritual realm goes, you would literally have to, would, might want to shoot the person when you don't have to shoot them. All you got to do is know the Word of God. And secondly, if you're dealing with someone who's demonic possessed, you may not be able to reach to your gun in time because they might get the upper hand on you and hurt you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Hey, now, I'm sorry if I left you speechless on that one, brother. That actually <laughs> happened right after we did the last show. That incident happened literally right after you and me did the last show. So this is timely. You're bringing it up. My goodness. Now, uh, it, uh, one of the things that, that I found so curious about the, the, the parrot story is that this guy's found a doctor to cut his ears off. I mean, I, don't they have some type of a, a Hippocratic oath where, where you know, the, the first thing is to do no harm? Now, there was this other story, uh, this lady, Jewel Shooping, and uh, she has what the psychiatrists have termed uh, body integrity identity disorder. So this is another one of those identity things where God didn't, God messed up. I was supposed to be, she says that she was supposed to be born blind and God made her born with, uh, with eyes to see. 
So uh, as a young girl, she would stare at the sun, you know, hoping to go blind. That never worked. Uh, now oh she's God. found a psychiatrist that actually put some numbing drops in her eyes and then poured uh, drain cleaner in her eyes, which uh, did eventually make her go blind. And so now she's she's completely blind. Um, this 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 right brother, this right here that you just brought up. I mean, look, this is what really this is actually one of my fears, and I don't fear anything, but I'm just saying like one of my worries per se. I look at things that when the grid goes down in the United States, whether it's the entire country or certain parts, we're going to see some manifestations on some people that pe we didn't think was possible. We're going to literally think we're watching an episode of The Exorcist, the way some people are going to bug out. Because what happens is the medical community, they are, they're medicating some of these people who are demonically possessed. And the only thing they're doing is putting a, a, they're putting a Band-Aid over a bigger issue. You have to get to the root of certain problems. You can have somebody in a psychological ward. A good example, a, a deliverance pastor that I know, this man went into a, a and I'm not going to say which state, he went into a psych ward. They let him in. He prayed over their worst patients in the place, and he prayed and did some of the same things that Jesus did in the Bible concerning deliverance. And guess what? He had a 90% effective rate. 90% of the people he prayed over, they all were out of that deliverance, out of that mental institution within a year, fully healed, completely. And these people, will mind you, they've been in there 10 years doped up because they were, quote-unquote, unsafe for society. So this is the, the effect that um, we can have as Christians and believers, as well as a prepper who's a Christian, because you're going to run into some of these people out there when the grid goes down and they don't get their meds. They're going to really, really be scary, some of them. But if you know how to pray and how to deal with it on the spiritual level, you're going to help a lot of people. You won't have to shoot them. And in some cases, you won't have to worry about them. They, once they're in their sane mind, they may become an ally. Yeah. And, and there's been other people that have had this disorder, the, the BIID, that uh, one guy cut his hands off with – cut one of his hands off with a, with a power tool. Another guy cut the circulation off of his leg so he'd lose his leg. And, uh, it, you know, it, it, re it reminds me of what Jesus said. He says the thief has come to kill, steal, and destroy. So, I mean, this is obviously uh, a demonic activity that's, that's, that's causing these people to, to basically sort of self-destruct, right? Yeah, and that, exactly. I mean, I don't know if you remember the case— it uh, happened a few years ago in South Florida, of all places, our our old stomping ground. There, the 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 black dude. And I'm an African American, so I can refer to him as a black dude. It's no biggie. I'm not racist. The the black dude on the bridge. He freaked out walking on the bridge in the causeway. He grabbed the homeless man and started and beat down the homeless man and started eating the guy's face. And he, mind you, he started eating the guy's face and then he stripped down naked while he's eating his the guy's face and the Miami police, they literally had to, they came to the scene and just, they, they tried to tell the guy to stop. He looks at them and just growls like an animal. And they just had to shoot him. They had no choice. They did the blood test. They thought he was on some new drugs. Only thing they found was marijuana in his system. Now, let me tell you guys, I'm going to be point blank and straight because I haven't always been a pastor. So let me just, I'm not holier than now because I've smoked marijuana once or twice in my life. Weed does not do that to anybody. Okay? That is a demonic spirit point blank period for you to strip down butt naked and then to go and literally beat down a homeless man and start eating his face come on i mean this stuff is right there in our face guys and uh it's something like I, it, there's 30 million americans that are on antidepressants we live in uh the most prosperous i mean is even as is as bad as things have gotten since the last economic downturn uh, we live in the most po prosperous country in the world. Uh, the people that are here on on uh, government subsistence that, that that are just getting a check from the government live better than most of the population of the of the world. Um, you know, being in poverty here is equivalent to being rich in many other nations. So yeah, and what that, is and, and that's that has right, to be hard. that has to be demonic activity that's causing these people to be depressed is is that what you would you would conclude 
Yeah, and if it's called a tormenting, they're called tormenting spirits. I mean, the demonic realm, which is a whole other discussion, there's a hierarchy there. Um, you know, to put it in layman's terms, just like we know, just like the mob. You got the mob boss, then they're under him, then you have capos, and then you have the other guys and the little guys and the smaller guys. It's the same thing. It'll go all the way up to, to Lucifer, a.k.a. Satan, but then under him, there's a, a hierarchy, and it gets smaller and smaller, it's from fallen angels to demons to minor demons to evil spirits. It gets smaller and smaller. So it's the same. It's the same exact thing, and that's why um, Christ, Christ, Christ said that He came to set the captives free. It's not always. A, it's not literally people inside of a jail and Him freeing people from from uh, from the torn from the gates of hell. But He's also talking about freeing people mentally. And freeing them spiritually because they're bound by spirits and e- evil um, entities. And I, I don't want to like uh, paint everybody that's taking antidepressants as you know as uh, oh they just you know they don't uh, you know their soup wasn't hot enough so now they they, they need to take a pill. I, I understand that that we've got a lot of people that uh, ha- have have served our country, uh, veterans that come back and, uh, and they've got PTSD, which is a, a, a real issue. But I wonder a lot of this stuff, you know, even when it's real issues, a lot of it, I think it's spiritual. And I think that there's been, there's been spiritual scars and spiritual harm done there, uh, to their spirit because of the, the things they've had to see and the things they've, that has been required of them, uh, in the line of duty. And, uh, and uh, whatever it is, and, and you know, there's so much, there's so much abuse, there's so much sexual abuse, there's so many, you know, there's so much wrong with this country that, you know, I'm sure that uh, a good many of those people uh, have some legitimate uh, psychological issues that they're, that, you know, and that's the only thing the doctor knows to do is to give them an antidepressant. But I'm wondering how much of that is spiritual, how much of that could be cured by some good uh, biblical counseling or some good you know, uh, uh, prayer and fasting and getting in the word and, and, and seeking to be healed for that. And, and, uh, and also, uh, while we're on that subject, if you can also comment to, uh, what would be the effects if we had sort of this grid down type collapse that, you know, the worst case scenario that we all, we all wonder if it's ever going to happen, uh, if you get in that type of situation and now you don't have access to those antidepressants and you've become physically and mentally and psychologically addicted to those and you know how are you going to cope without them so uh do you think that a lot of this could can be healed uh spiritually and and do you think that Absolutely. from a from a preparedness point of view is that a good idea to start trying to look for those other solutions now Yes, we have to look for those solutions now. You and you asked, you said a mouthful. With, so I'm gonna I'm gonna. Yes, everything can be handled. It can be fixed and handled spiritually. A lot of it also depends on the heart of what's in the person. Because um, I've met drug people on hardcore drugs that they truly wanted to set free. They wanted to change their life, and they were serious about it. They tired of they tired of being on the hardcore dope, and they really cried out to God. And just by just a little bit of prayer and people praying over them, they were able to go. I mean, clean off the drugs. But then there's some people where, in all honesty, hey, they like getting high. They like getting drunk. You know, so their heart isn't right with God because they're not fully serious, so nothing will happen. So, you know, there's those case, cases. But, but what you said with the PTSD situation, this is very serious. I, in that chapter in my book, The Preacher and the Prepper, A Spiritual Survival Guide, because this is how serious it goes in Chapter 13, here's what one thing the Lord showed me. When we have a lot of our brave men and women go over to Iraq and Afghanistan, they leave here healthy, they have all their wits, nothing's wrong with them, they go over there. Now I'm going to preface this, let's just I'm be in a cold agreement with you. There are some soldiers and ex, some vets and people who have witnessed some atrocities over in these wars and these battle places. They ran into um, explosions, they were sneak attack, all kind of trauma has happened to them. And in some of those cases... I say, okay, yes, some of these guys do need a little medical attention. They may need some treatment to help them cope and to balance out their, their system from the blunt trauma they were exposed to, you know, that, the, even if it's a chemical imbalance and things of that, that nature on a natural level. But here's how deep this goes. When we haven't examined the locations of some of where these people are going, Afghanistan, Iraq, these were the scenes of some of the most gruesome battles in history, Genghis Khan, Alexander the Great, 
I mean, there's you, there's a list of of warriors and generals who have waged battle on the very same grounds of Afghanistan and Iraq, and they have literally piled up thousands of dead bodies on these lands and these territories. Now, let me give you a quick question, Mark, just to, to show you where we're going. If I offered you a five-star hotel and a five-star vacation for you and your wife to go to on the house totally free, and I said the only catch is, Mark, you have to stay in the hotel room that was the scene of a grisly murder where 20 people were killed. But we cleaned up all the blood and everything. It's all clean now. But you just have to stay in that room. That's the only catch for this free vacation. Would you want to take it? No, thank you. Exactly. I've even spoke to atheists who wouldn't want the room, even though it's all cleaned up. See, that's the thing. People in their subconscious know, in the spiritual level, the scene of a grisly murder, there's bad energy there. There's a bad vibe there. Well, it's much deeper than we can realize, because in the Bible it says that life is in the blood, and there's literally life in the blood where places are spilled. The Bible makes so many references to where the land is defiled. Even King David wasn't allowed to build the temple because he shed too much blood on the earth. They had to give it to Solomon. So I get into the book in detail how deep this goes, because... When our brave men and women from the U.S. military, as well as the British military, went to Afghanistan and Iraq to serve, a lot of the places they laid their heads at night were places where literally thousands of bodies have been just literally laying out there in the earth, unburied, just laying out there dead from all these past skirmishes and battles from the Genghis Khan days and the Attila, uh, uh, excuse me, Alexander the Great days and all these other people, including up to Saddam Hussein, who left thousands of bodies just out there rotting. So all that blood spills into the earth. There is a spiritual effect and a demonic effect that takes place. And so what happens when these men and women are sleeping and t interacting on the floor, on the ground, in their tents, on these very same places, their spirit is literally battling with this stuff, and they come into the United States. They have no idea why they're having suicidal thoughts, why do they feel like they feel, what happened. And, and the reason why, the, one of the reasons the Lord showed me this, some of the men and women this is occurring to from the military, they weren't in any of the battles and skirmishes. Like, you'll have one guy... He was a potato peeler, for God's sakes. He was in the kitchen the whole time. He was not in one shootout. But yet he's coming back with all this post-traumatic um, disorder. But yet the soldier who was in the shootouts and in the explosions and stuff like that, I can understand him coming back with some of these issues. That's totally okay. You know, he's been through some hell. But the other guy who was in, pushing papers all day, you know, just sitting inside an office, coming back with the same exact disorder, that's when you have to be honest and say, wait a second, there's something spiritual coming on, going on here. It's time for a quick break, and we'll be right back. The dollar's lost over 90% of its purchasing power since 1971. Silver, on the other hand, has proved to be a very stable form of wealth preservation over the years. And where do you buy silver? Silver.com, of course. Silver.com offers fantastic prices on silver and gold. All long-term storage food is not created equal. Folks who have been prepping for a while will tell you. There's a long-term storage food that you can eat if you have to, and long-term storage food that you love to eat. The apocalypse will be tough enough. Buy high-quality foods that you'll love to eat from Valley Food Storage at valleyfoodstorage.com. And getting back to that verse where Jesus said uh, the, the thief comes to kill, still and destroy, um... We have about 22 suicides a day from uh, from veterans, and for a year, that's about 8,000 a year. If you look at, it's been 10 years since we went to Iraq, uh, you know, 80,000, that's way more than what we've lost in combat. So, that, is, yeah, that's, 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 that's spiritual, that's do you think? Yeah, it, it's this is exactly what's going on. A lot of our boys, our men and women, are coming back with literal demonic entities attached to them for some of these reasons that I, I explained. It goes much deeper. There's a lot more going on in the spiritual realm when you go to some of these places, some of these lands. Um, and your best protection is to be covered by the literal blood of Jesus Christ. When you're covered by his blood, a lot of these entities, it's harder for them to affect you and to disturb you. Now, I, I, like I said, I, I'm, I'm not ignorant that some of these guys, you know, they've been through some heavy battles and skirmishes, and some of the stuff is traumatic, and they, you know, a little bit of medicine helps some of these guys, but some of them, it's a spiritual thing. And when we, for us preppers, this is how serious it is, because we're going to run into some of these people, not talking about just veterans, but just people who literally are demonically possessed, and in the grid-down situations, 
or as a, even if we just our economy collapses and they're like, well, you can't afford these meds anymore because there's no more free access to these medications, we're going to have some serious, serious problems on our hand unless we know how to pray for these people. If you know how to pray for these people and how to do a little bit of deliverance, just the basics in turn them, just saying, which you can literally lay hands, you and another Christian, lay hands on somebody and say, you foul, evil spirit tormenting our brother, we command you to leave in the name of Jesus Christ. You do that, you will have some better results than the medication, as long as you do it and you're, you, you're, you and your friend or a solid Christian is praying over that particular person, it'll, it'll work. It will literally work. Some cases, a little bit of fasting, some more praying and stuff, you might, you might have to do a little extra. But you will see results. That young lady I told you about who had the, the, the demonic spirit on her when she was slithering out like a serpent and had a demonic voice like the exorcist coming out of her mouth, she was labeled bipolar. She was labeled a whole bunch of other things. She was on a ton of medications. Now I'm glad to say she is totally free. She's not on any meds whatsoever. And I have to think that uh, out of these, I guess, about 80,000 uh, vets that have, that have committed suicide over the past 10 years, uh, if we do the math on 22 suicides a day for 10 years, um, most of those must have been on antidepressants. So evidently, that's not working. The, well, yeah, what the VA is working. giving them, what the v, the counseling and the, the medication and, and the things that the VA is giving them, it's not working, right? It's it's obvious it's not working. And because, under, especially now under this administration where the Christians are ostracized, you know, the chaplains are getting court-martialed for just total nonsense, the very people who can help these veterans in the military, they're li- they're, labeled being, they're being blackballed or kicked out of the military. Wow. So, I mean... If, and I would do it for free. If they just put me in a position to say, go and help some of these guys, I would more than love to help out some of our troops because they, they put their life on the line for us. I would more than be happy to go and, you know, cast out a couple of these demons and help them on the spiritual end. I mean, I've done it already. I've run into a few and, you know, prayed over them and helped them get some freedom. But it's, it's one of those things where we're in, a, we're in a very awful quagmire because, you know, under the current administration and, you know, that anti-Christian bias, you know, I mean, when it basically put, you know, the potential ther- potential terrorist is a constitutionalist, someone who reads the Bible, you know, uh, homeschoolers. I mean, they basically put me all up in the mix <laughs> as well as some other people. <laughs> yeah, you, you've pretty much uh, taken on most of those. You've checked off most of those boxes on the on the MIAC report, haven't you? <laughs> And and I find it funny because I I used to be a I used to be a uh, a diehard liberal Democrat uh, some years back and it's funny I'm like wait a second I thought I was one of I thought I was friends with you guys and now it's like eh, no <laughs> you and you and Ben Carson and Ron Paul all of you <laughs> they they want to put us all into a camp <laughs> so so you've had a little spiritual deliverance yourself then oh yeah oh yeah I've had a, I've had a lot over the past years and that. That's just uh, God dealing with me and really showing me things for what they are. Um, I mean, honestly, I, I took a more shame on myself because there were some things I'm discussing I knew, but there were some things I didn't know because I straight away I stopped reading the Bible for some years. And then when I came back, everything, God just opened my eyes to everything to show me where we're at and how bad, how fast this sink is ship, this ship is sinking. <laughs> and, and, Let's say there's some some folks listening right now, and and they've been on they've been on the antidepressants for several years. Uh, it's just things just aren't getting better. Uh, maybe they feel themselves in a downward spiral, um, and and they want to try something else because what they're doing is just not working. And uh, where do they start? Where do they reach out? Where's the first place they they need to go? Okay, good question. I'm glad you asked. First, anyone, if you have internet access, just go, do a Google search, whichever state you're in, type in deliverance ministers or deliverance pastors, and those guys, the majority of them that should come up, um, they should be able to help you, assist you when you get in touch with them um, in terms of just you tell them what's going on with you, if you're hearing voices, feeling like suicidal, etc. They may ask you to come on into their church or their office, wherever they're located, 
some of them will literally go work with you over the phone and pray with you, et cetera, just to help you get through. Um, you can hit me on my Facebook account, Keith Icon, um, just to type in and I'll accept you as a friend. And if you say, hey, Brother Keith, I'm a vet or I'm not even a vet. I'm just having these suicidal thoughts. Can you call me? I'll call you on my dime to try to pray with you. And if it's something that can be delivered over the phone, because deliverance can actually happen over the phone as well when the right prayers are put in place. Um, it can happen over the phone. But deliverance ministers, because depending on how serious your situation is, in some cases you may need to see a deliverance minister, someone who's really anointed by God to do this stuff, and they can literally meet up with you, and God will help them. Help. God literally, I've seen it, he gives them the exact word of knowledge of what to pray for you about. So, Because everybody's case is different. Somebody could have experienced blunt trauma as a child. They could have witnessed some something horrible and gruesome. They could have been uh, molested or raped, or they could have just been at war, and they've seen some horrible things over there. So all the cases are different of why some people are tormented. But do my steps first. Go online, type in deliverance minister first uh, in your area. See what comes up. You'll be surprised. And there are some deliverance ministries who will work with you, and they will call you over the phone, and many of them don't even charge you a dime. They're doing it because they're called of the Lord. It's a donation uh, thing that if you, if you have a dollar, you give a dollar. If you don't have a dollar, if you have a million, you give a million. If you have nothing, you give nothing. That's how, that's how the true workers of God work. Is they work by donation. They don't say, hey, it's going to cost you a thousand bucks to talk to me. And, and like we said, it's not just vets. I mean, although that's 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 a, a large part of our, our population that, that do, and then that's the first thing because you know uh, the VA. That's just the easiest thing for them to do. It's just get them get them drugged up and and you know uh, leave me alone. Uh, but like you said, there's uh, sexual abuse, and then there's physical abuse, and then there's verbal abuse with people that just grew up with a with a parent that 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 was uh, you know uh, verbally abusive, telling them that that maybe they you know they weren't. They're, you're you're good for nothing. You're never going to amount to anything, and and all of that kind of thing. That that that's uh, you know that could be traumatic as well. Um, and and like you said, people that have just witnessed horrific things. Um, so there's all there's all types of things, and then and then a lot of this, a lot of people self medicate, and then that that causes addiction. Uh, you know, when you talked about uh, marijuana, but then, you know, a lot of there's alcoholism and then and harder drugs and all of that kind of thing. Uh, that's all spiritual, right? It's all it's a lot of it is all spiritual. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's interesting. I had to enlighten my church on this one day. Um, I let them know, like, look, look, you see on TV when like people in Africa or the Caribbean or South America, they go to these witch doctors or voodoo doctors. And all they do, the witch doctors and voodoo doctors, they'll see some demonic stuff, and they can cast spells and incantations, no doubt. But you see that they'll, they'll mix certain herbs and stuff together and certain potions to, to make their little witches brew. And they do it all the time in nature. But literally what they're doing, they're using the same stuff as the pharmaceutical industry. The pharmaceutical industry, people have to realize some of these drugs and medications are taken from plants in nature. And all they do is isolate the most effective compound in it to give you that particular toxin, or excuse me, drug. So here you go, you're in that situation taking this stuff, but yet you don't have the knowledge that this is the same stuff that the witch doctors and stuff have been using throughout all these different places in the world for thousands of years to see the demonic realm and to see evil spirits and stuff. So there's so much more going on to when people are taking these meds. I have a friend of mine, another example, she was taking some meds. Uh, she was labeled uh, depre uh, manic depressant and some other stuff. And one day she seen red scorpions dripping in blood coming out of her wall. And, I mean, that's freaky stuff. And she was beyond spooked when she seen it. And sure enough, we just brought her to a deliverance pastor. I wasn't even doing deliverance at the time as, as much as I do it now. We brought her to a deliverance pastor, and the person just prayed over her and knew exactly what to pray. And she's been fine ever since. So this is how serious some of this stuff goes. A lot of it is based in the spiritual realm. And my thing is I really am concerned for preppers who don't know about this stuff because there's times you may end up pulling a gun on someone which won't even be necessary if you know how to handle it on the spiritual side. And in other cases, what if that person is like uh, your, your new wife, it's her, it's her daughter, 
you know, you, you just got remarried and it's her daughter and you love your new wife, you don't want to put a bullet in her daughter, especially if the stuff is so simple you can get rid of it on the spiritual realm. So this is stuff where I really want preppers to understand I'm sent to I'm my book is out there because I'm I'm I've been sent by God to get preppers to wake up to the things on the spiritual side. I, I mean, yeah, I know some of the natural stuff, and I tell some of you, you know, hey, store food, store water, da da da. But my book is focused on the spiritual aspect of prepping, and this is one of the aspects. And uh, Jesus gives the the parable of the or I yeah, this is a parable of the demonic spirit that's cast out and then uh he goes through the arid places and he comes back and finds the house the house swept and and neat and brings seven others with him once you're delivered do you have some responsibility do you have to do you have to start getting involved in in personal time of worship maybe just listening to praise music or or do you need to get plugged into a church or or dedicate some time every morning to praying and 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 reading your bible to make sure that that when that thing comes back, it doesn't find an empty house. Is is there some responsibility on us for that once we're delivered? Oh, yes. Thank you for saying, bringing that up. There's a big responsibility. Anybody, I'm going to do a prayer over everybody listening before we're done. So just remind me. So I'm, because I'll do deliverance over this line. I can help some people out. But there's a responsibility. Even after I pray and you get some freedom, sometimes the demons will try to come back. And they'll come back subtly. Sometimes they'll try to come back strong. But the key is you have to start praying, praying to Jesus Christ. You have to start reading your Bible. If you get yourself a Bible, start reading it and praying it. And if you can, if you got any kind of Christian music, you play that in your house now. You start playing it on your iPod or your CD player or whatever. You go on a podcast that has Christian music. You play it in your house. Number one, demonic spirits, they don't like anything holy. They don't like to hear any Christian music. They don't like to be around someone who reads the Bible. They don't like to hear, they want to be, well, don't want to hang around you when you actually pray to God, because then they're really trying to, they're infringing on God's special time with you. So guess what? They're not going to want to hang around you for all these different things. And I'm, just, I'm summing up stuff really quick for the listeners, but that's just some of the things you can do to follow through. And of course, do not go back to the sins in your life, whatever it was. A uh, good example, there was a lady who came to our church recently, another one. She needed some deliverance. She was seeing literal demonic beings showing up inside her living room. And we know this lady wasn't, and if mine, um, by the way, she was a veteran. She served in the military 20 years, um, did her full 20, got her pension, everything. She was honorably discharged, the whole nine yards. But saying that to say this, she started seeing all these demonic manifestations. As I asked her some more questions, it turns out her boyfriend is into, like, some hardcore, like, witchcraft. Like, he's into, like, Ouija boards and tarot cards and all that stuff. And he does this stuff all the time. And I told her flat out, I said, sis, look, that guy, I know you love him, but you're going to have to leave him unless he wants to become a Christian, too. If he wants to become a Christian, too, then we st just be his friend and pray for him to, for God to, um, to reel him in. But if he wants to stay doing that witchcraft stuff, you're, if you have sex with that man again, you're going to bring those demons back on you. And so I'm telling you, don't do it. And she was like, oh, Pastor Keith, I'm not going to go back and mess with him because I don't want those things to torment me. I, that stuff is scary. I don't want to see him again. Dude, within a week, she's back in the sack with the guy. So what do you think happens? You see what I mean? Wow. <laughs> this is how you have to be serious if you want your freedom, you got to, you can't play games with God. Cause I'm glad you read that, that scripture, those demons, if you give them the excuse, they will come back and they will come back hard. <laughs> wow. And, uh, can you, can you pray that deliverance prayer for our listeners? I'm just going to pray it led by the, the Holy spirit guys, anybody listening, it's, this is not scripted. You know, we're just having, we're having a normal conversation. We didn't even know God was going to lead it like this. No, I, once Spirit, again, I've got, I've got two pages of, uh, prepping questions that we didn't get to. <laughs> They're all, I, I, I don't even have the old ones. I wrote all new prepping questions and, uh, I've got the, I still got the one where I told everybody I'd, I'd answer it at the first, the first interview about the, the diatomaceous earth, the food grade diatomaceous earth. I have it written down all the notes, what you need to know and what happened biblically with it that people don't know. So that's funny. It's still here. We can do it again. We're going to get you back. One of these days, we're going to, we're going to talk about prepping when you're on the show. Okay. Let's all pray right, that well, prayer for the folks. 
anybody who's out there, if you have suicidal thoughts or anything like that, first and foremost, I just want you to repeat these words after me. Jesus Christ, I know you're the Son of God. I accept you as my Savior. Please come into my heart and fill me with your Holy Ghost, with your Holy Spirit. Come into me, please. I need your help. And if you just pray that honestly and say that, he's going to come to you. He will, if you're honest. And now I'm going to pray a prayer over you. Father, I hold up every brother and sister listening to this uh, this podcast. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Father, I ask everyone who has is bound by tormenting spirits, Father, I ask in Jesus' name that this will be the day that you set them free. Your word says who the Son sets free is free indeed. Father, I ask in Jesus' name that you will just cover them with your blood. Cover them as well, Father God, with your holy angels. Put them around them. I rebuke every demonic spirit right now in the name of Jesus Christ off the listeners. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. I command you to come off of these people and leave them and go to the east and to the west and never to return in the name of Jesus Christ. I rebuke you. I bind your power. I bind you right now in Jesus' name. The Word of God says whatever we loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Whatever we bound on earth will be bound in heaven. I loose angels of the living God onto everyone right now to saw off every demon off of the people that's being afflicted on this line. And Father, I ask for anybody who has a relative that's listening, that's demonically oppressed and stressed, Father, as in Jesus' name, you give every listener here the full authority of your Holy Spirit, as well as the knowledge and the wisdom to cast off every demon off that person. Teach them, Holy Ghost, just to lay hands on their relative or loved ones, and just tell them, demonic spirits, I command you to leave my relative right now in the name of Jesus Christ and to be free. Father, I thank you for this time and for this network and this broadcast, and we thank you, Father, and we ask you bless the listeners. And bless the producer. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. And and uh, like you said, uh, you, you, you have to look for a certain type of church because, I mean, the, I, I think you go to Joel Olstein's church, you're probably gonna, he's probably going to send you to a psychiatrist that's going to double you down on your meds. Oh, and, gosh, brother, you said a mouthful. And there's some church, there's, there's Christian counseling that's biblical, and there's counseling that's called christian that's worldly that's that's just uh it's just uh freudian stuff uh in in an office with the cross hanging on the wall is that right yeah it, it is um like i told the listeners i'm giving you permission to hit me on facebook keith iton um you, uh, so i'm the only one on there my dad he's the same guy but he's not here on a facebook account you hit me up i'll accept you as a friend I can help try to find a deliverance minister in your state, in your area, or no matter where you are in the world, I'll try to help you. And if I can't, if not, if we can get on the phone or on Skype, we'll do deliverance over the Skype line. As long as I know you're serious and you're not wasting my time, I'll do it for you for free. I work, I do work on donation. I'm, I don't, I'm one of those pastors. I don't take a salary. It's all donation. So don't worry about any cost or anything like that. I'm here to do the work of the Lord just to see you get free. And if you're really, really concerned about it, you, you get in touch with me, even if you have a relative, and we'll try to help. We'll try to find a way. Uh, he hit it on the head. There's some people, you go to Joel Osteen's church. Let me tell you, that church does not deal with deliverance. In fact, that church only deals with prosperity. And I would just ki- highly implore you, you would want to get around a, a Christians or a church that deal with the whole gospel of Jesus Christ. They don't just give you a little slither, a little morsel. You need the whole thing, especially in the day and age we go in, because I feel bad for people who attend those mega churches, because when things really hit the fan in the United States of America, as well as England and other places, they're going to be lost, because they only know a little tiny portion of the gospel of Jesus Christ. They don't know the whole thing, and the whole Knowing the whole thing is actually your armor. You're gonna know. You're gonna be armed in the spiritual realm when you know the more more of the Bible and the Word of God. So try to get out those mega churches if you're in one right now, and try to find a smaller, biblically sound uh, church. Pastor Keith, thanks so much again for uh, just what what a great show. I think we just had. And uh, and folks, if there's people out there and you self-identify as a parrot 
or as a blind person, or, uh, you know, if you're, if you're a man, you know, God made you a man and you feel like you should have been a, a woman. That's not of God. That's spiritual. And, uh, it's a spiritual problem and the solution is spiritual. So get on your knees, pray and, uh, get deliverance and get in the word worship and, uh, and, and start getting your mind on the things of God. And that's, that's going to wash that out. And, and, and that's the cure. That's the problem is spiritual. And the cure is also spiritual. It's not drugs and it's not, it's not, uh, you know, it's not getting your ears cut off or, uh, or pouring Drano in your eyes or, um, or, uh, uh, dressing up as a woman. That's just, that's not what it is. It's, uh, the, the, the cure is spiritual. So, um, Pastor Keith, thanks again for coming on the show. And you've got a great book. Tell us tell us about that book and uh, where they can find it. They can find my book, The Prepper and the Preacher, A Spiritual Survival Guide. It can be found on Amazon.com, or if you're out on out other parts of the world, just go on Amazon. It will come up, and they'll get it to you. And I really appreciate all the support from anybody who supported the book. And please review the book on Amazon as well, because... I'm starting to realize that a lot of people read those reviews. In the days of Noah, book three, Perdition, a global empire arises like a phoenix from the ashes of the world that was. The emerging order is unified by a new global currency and a single world religion, which are mandated by an imposed UN treaty. In the interest of unity and peace, a zero tolerance policy for dissenters is enacted and strictly enforced. Hunted down like common criminals for daring to resist the state, Noah Parker's group will have to rely on faith and wits to endure the powers of darkness which are quickly consuming the earth. Buy your copy of The Days of Noah, Book 3, Perdition, by best-selling author Mark Goodwin in paperback, Kindle, or audio edition from Amazon.com today.